Good morning, everybody. All right, today we are going to learn about Avery's experiment. And Avery was the second researcher that was exploring this crazy molecule here called DNA. Of course, he didn't know his DNA yet, but by the end of this video, at the end of understanding Avery's experiment, we will see that we figured out it was DNA during this experiment, okay? The real thing people were looking for, of course, was uh, what the heck was the genetic material, okay? So let's start first uh, with a kind of a recap of last of the last thing we looked at, which was Griffith's experiment. Okay, so in Griffith's experiment, remember he had two strains of bacteria, an S strain and an R strain. The S strain would kill you and the R strain would not. Well, in a mouse, he put in the S strain, the mouse died because it would kill you. The R strain he put in the mouse, the mouse lived. He killed the S strain and put it in the mouse, and since the S strain was dead, it didn't hurt the mouse, so the mouse lived. And finally, he mixed a live S strain, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, dead S strain that won't kill you with live R strain, which won't kill you. He mixed them together, and voila, the mouse died. So from that, he figured that, hey, something had to change or transform the S strain, the, the living R strain into the living S strain. That's what he figured out. And he said, he called that process transformation. And he said there had to be some molecule that made this happen. Something that we couldn't see that made this happen. And he called that the transforming agent. Okay. So about oh, 16 years later comes along this guy, Oswald Avery. And Oswald Avery he just he saw Griffith's experiment, thought it was pretty cool, and he thought he would try to figure out what the transforming agent was. So that was his goal. He wanted to figure out what the transformative agent that Griffith talked about, what that agent was. Okay, so he came up with kind of a neat experiment. Um, and what he decided to do is he decided to kind of repeat this experiment with the mice, except he knew. He knew, and this is kind of weird, he knew that uh, bacteria were only made out of five things. And here's the five things. Let's make it bigger so you can see, okay? Here's the five things. They were made out of proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, which are fats, DNA, and RNA, okay? That's what he knew it was made out of. So he took them and he put them into... He took this S strain. Remember the S strain from Griffith's experiment? Let's move this over a little bit. Here's Griffith's experiment. I don't know how big I can make it here. But he took the S strain in here. He chopped it up in here. He killed it. It was dead S strain. This is dead S strain. When it was dead and broken apart, it was broken into these five things. And what he did is he used uh, this molecule called an enzyme. And enzymes are molecules that do work in a cell, okay? They're molecules that do work in a cell, and the names of an enzyme always end in ASE. So if you, like, remember we said sugar always end in OSE? Well, enzymes always end in ASE. So if you see ASE, you know it's an enzyme. Well, he had an enzyme that the work it did this time is it took each of these molecules out one at a time. So you had to have five different enzymes. One enzyme that only took proteins out, one enzyme that only took carbohydrates out, one enzyme that only took lipids out. He had to do this experiment five times. And what he did is he took the proteins out, he mixed it together with live R strain, and he looked to see if the mouse died because of transformation. If the mouse did not die, then he knew that thing did not cause transformation. I'm sorry, I'm dumb. If the mouse did die, if the mouse yeah, no, I was right. I was right. If the mouse lived, he knew transformation didn't happen. And if transformation didn't happen, he knew the thing he took out was the thing that caused transformation. Because if he took it out and transformation didn't happen, that had to be the thing that caused it. Right? Right. All right. So let's let's look at his experiment in a little bit more detail. I'm going to make, I'm going to get rid of that. But I'm going to make this guy smaller. But we can kind of still see him here. So let's put him up in the corner. Okay. All right. So he started with proteins, okay? So if you notice, he, he took this batch right here, and this has everything in it. This is that broken up dead S strain, and, he, and it, has, it has the lipids, proteins, carbohydrates, DNA, RNA. 
Well, he mixed into this, he mixed in this enzyme called protease. When he mixed protease into this, it took the proteins out. So there was no proteins here. How do we know that? Let's see, proteins are orange. There's orange, there's orange here. No orange, no proteins, okay? So he took the proteins out. When he took the proteins out, the mouse still died. The mouse still had, trans the transformation still occurred. So he knew that proteins weren't the problem. Okay, so he took that away. Now, next, he said, okay, protein is not the problem. Maybe it's carbohydrates. And just for the record, he really thought it was protein. So he was very surprised at this point. So he's like, well, maybe it's carbohydrates. So he mixed in some carbase. And carbase takes out the carbohydrates. Carbohydrates kind of bright green here. So there they are. They're in the mix. He puts in the carbase. And all of a sudden, there's no carbohydrates, right? He puts it into the mouse that he's mixed with the live R strain transformation still happens the mouse still dies so he knows it's not carbohydrates okay two down let's move that over there all right next he says i bet it's lipids so he puts the lipids the fats in there takes the lipase he mixes it in blah 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 blah, blah. and the lipase here which is yellow takes out the yellow parts the lipids are gone so there's no lipids in this dead S strain. He mixes it with the live R strain. Lo and behold, the mouse dies. Transformation still happens. That tells him, crap, it's not lipase. All right, well, he's starting to go, what the heck is it? So he thinks, maybe RNA. So he tries RNA, right? Takes RNA, puts it in, mixes it up. You know, RNA is blue. There's no RNA here in the uh, the dead S strain. He mixes that dead S strain with live R strain. Of course, it lacks the RNA. Puts it into the mouse. Transformation happens. The mouse freaking dies, okay? And he's like, this is crazy. And transformation still happens, so he knows that it's not the RNA. Well, he's only got one thing left, and he definitely does not think that this is what it is. But he's like, okay, let's try it. Just name a science, I guess. We'll do it. Here's DNA. He mixes that in. He mixes the DNA in, which is this red, right? There's no red here. He in mixes that with the uh, R strain that we talked about. I mean, yeah, the R strain. He puts the dead S, the live R, with no DNA into the mouse. Lo and behold, Pepe the mouse lives. Very happy about that, I might add. He lives. And transformation does not occur, which tells Avery that DNA must be the culprit. It must be the transforming agent. This is a big surprise for him, but DNA is the transforming agent. And so Avery publishes these results. Everybody's shocked. Nobody thinks it's DNA. They're still kind of skeptical. But uh, they figure out this must be the deal, that because transformation did not occur when DNA was removed, and it did when the other stuff was removed, that told him that DNA had to be the reason transformation happened, so it had to be the transformative agent. End of story. He goes home happy. Look what I figured out, honey. What's for dinner? All right. If that all makes sense to you, then you are good to go. Complete your note sheet. And let's head back and work on that crazy timeline comic. Peace out, homies.